Greetings, and welcome to St. John Chrysostom Church in Wallingford. St. John's is a beautiful church, and when you enter, the sanctuary and altar immediately become the focus of your attention, as is customary in churches. However, you soon realize that you are surrounded by a spectacular array of stained glass windows that encompass and highlight the entire space, giving it an air of lightness and rich, bright color. These stained glass windows tell us about the seven sacraments of the church and also about seven saints whose lives were devoted to aiding and assisting the poor and marginalized in our world. Each window is unique and tells us a fascinating story while giving us something to think about. Food for thought, if you will, as we ponder God's greatness here in our lives each day. Let's take a look at this stained glass window entitled Holy Eucharist and see what it reveals to us. This scene depicts Jesus receiving a basket containing loaves of bread and several fishes from a boy, from which Jesus will feed more than 5,000 people. If we look at the Gospel of John, chapter 6, verses 1 through 15, we read, After this, Jesus went across the Sea of Galilee. A large crowd followed him because they saw the signs he was performing on the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat down with his disciples. The Jewish feast of Passover was near. When Jesus raised his eyes and saw that a large crowd was coming to him, he said to Philip, Where can we buy enough food for them to eat? He said this to test him, because he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Two hundred days' wages worth of food would not be enough for each of them to have a little bit. One of his disciples, Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what good are these for so many? Jesus said, Have the people recline. Now there was a great deal of grass in that place. So the men reclined, about five thousand in number. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed them to those who were reclining, and also as much of the fish as they wanted. When they had had their fill, he said to the disciples, Gather the fragments left over, so that nothing will be wasted. So they collected them and filled twelve wicker baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves that had been more than they could eat. When the people saw the sign he had done, they said, this is truly the prophet, the one who is to come into the world. Since Jesus knew that they were going to come and carry him off to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain alone. Did you know that, aside from his resurrection, this is the only miracle performed by Jesus that appears in all four Gospels? In John's Gospel, which we just read, in Matthew's Gospel two times, in Mark's gospel, two times, and in Luke's gospel. Notice the young boy in front of Jesus, holding the wicker basket containing the loaves of bread and the fishes. The gospel story tells us that the loaves were barley and not wheat. Barley was the bread of poor people, rather than more expensive wheat bread. And recall how we also heard Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, say to Jesus, What good are these for so many? Perhaps Andrew forgot that Jesus had promised to make him and all of his followers, including us, fishers of men and women. We also see lots of green grass as we hear described in the gospel story. It was springtime and the Jewish feast of Passover was near. Passover occurs near Easter time, which is when Christians celebrate the death and resurrection of Jesus. We also see lots of stones on the ground along with the grass. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 4, Satan tempts Jesus, saying, Command that these stones become loaves of bread. Jesus tells him and us, One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. And looking at the text at the bottom of the window, we see that it comes from John's Gospel, chapter 6, verse 33. For the bread of God is that which came down from heaven and gives life to the world. Jesus is truly the bread of life for each of us. How fortunate we are to receive him in Holy Eucharist. 
The gospel story also tells us that the number of men reclining on the green grass was about 5,000. If we assume that each man was married and had his wife and perhaps two or three children reclining with him, the number of people present would have been about 20,000 or maybe more, more than the Wells Fargo Center in Philadelphia can hold. They are on the side of the mountain. Notice also how all the people on the mountainside are different colors, purple, blue, brown, beige, and so on. They represent all the peoples of the entire world. Jesus, the bread of life, is not just for one group of people. Jesus is the bread of life for everyone. The window also challenges us to ponder something. In the basket, we see the two fishes, but there are only four barley loaves. Where do you suppose the fifth barley loaf might be? Perhaps each of us is the fifth loaf of bread, sent forth to the entire world to feed the hungry and welcome the stranger into our lives. What do you think? Thank you for watching and listening to the story of the Sacrament of Holy Eucharist as depicted in this stained glass window. Next time you come to St. John's, stop over and take a look at it and see if you don't notice something new in it, something nobody else ever saw before, something you can share with your family and friends. God bless you.